Question number three, part B. This is based on projection of solids. I want all of you to focus your attention and I have got a Zugadu sort of a demonstration for all of you so that we can get going with the solution of the problem. Okay, do watch this video entirely. Here we go. So we are talking about a pentagonal pyramid, 40 mm edge of the base and axis. Axis height is 70 millimeters resting on one of the corners of the base. How many corners are there? Sir, there are as many as, we show this to you, five corners. You can see this, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. These are the base edges. What is the length? Sir, 40 mm. All of them are 40 millimeters each. Very well. Secondly, if you watch carefully, there is a small dot that I have made. Okay. This is the center of the base and this point is the pinnacle or the apex. The distance between these two points is 70 millimeters also known as axis resting on one of the corners on corners of base on HP okay any one corner you can choose and the entire solid is resting on this corner something of this sort which essentially means that the remaining four corners will be up in the air the edge opposite to the corner is parallel to and 45 mm above HP it is parallel to HP at the same time it is at a height of 45 millimeters that's what has been given in the question and it's parallel to VP. <laughs> so many constraints. It is parallel to HP. Okay. It is at a certain height, 45 mm above HP. Okay. Now it is also parallel to VP. Let's read further. Any more conditions? Draw the projection when the apex is nearer to the VP. So many things are there. Ape, now the apex also happens to be nearer to the VP. There are so many, so many damn conditions given in the question, but still we can crack it. Don't worry. Let me take you to the solution and uh, here we go. Let's start. That's the pentagonal pyramid I am talking about. The base is 40 mm. All of these sides are 40 millimeters each. The height is 70 millimeters. If you want to take a look, let me just show this to you. This. Uh, uh. Mm, from the apex if you make this line which connects it with the center this is 70 millimeters secondly there are plenty of conditions which have been given okay let me discuss them one by one the first of all the condition is resting on one of the corners of base on hp that is the first condition resting on a corner on hp the edge opposite to this corner okay the opposite edge of the corner is at a height of 45 mm. Also, it is parallel to HP. Right? Okay. Draw the projection when the apex is nearer to the VP. Apex is nearer. So, apex is nearer. Please remember. One more thing that you should keep in mind. That uh, this edge is parallel to VP. Edge is parallel to VP. Okay. So, these, these two points basically are concerned with the edge and this point is concerned with the corner now we can get going with the solution but before that let me switch on the camera so that i can give you a good perspective as to how the object has been really kept uh, this can really help you here we go let me switch to a different mode here we go this is my writing pad. Hai. Let me make this as my vertical plane. And by the way, this entire video that you're watching right now is also available in Hindi on my second channel, BTEC Plus. You can watch it. Okay. And that's <coughs> the pentagonal pyramid. Let's hope that my phone stays stable in this position. So, this is what we are seeing right now. That's a pentagonal pyramid. The base is pentagonal in shape. That is the center of the base, which connects with the top. That is the apex. Okay. How many triangular faces are there? Sir, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, so far so good. Now, it has been given in the question that it is resting on a corner on HP. Let me switch to a different mode. Here it is. Resting on a corner on HP. Isn't it? Okay. And read the second condition also. The opposite edge to that corner is at a height of 45 mm 
above the HP. So uh, let me show you in the demonstration how these two conditions work. Here we go. Let's say that this corner always stays in contact with the ground or with the horizontal plane. Okay, so this is going to be something of this sort. The remaining four corners, the remaining four corners, let's say these four corners are up in the air. Where one more thing that you should keep in mind, if you watch, let me take this. This is the corner and the opposite edge to this corner is here. This is that opposite edge. This opposite edge it is at a height of 45 millimeters, which has been given in the question. Okay. So this is exactly what you guys need to implement. Uh, this opposite edge is at a certain height. Now, you guys are watching this from the front. So there is an edge over here, which would look like a point, but there is actually an edge. Let me turn it slightly so that you guys can see it. This is an edge, but when you look at it from the front, it looks like a point. This is going to be your step number two. In the third step, again, a condition has been imposed and that says that it is parallel to VP. This is parallel to VP. Uh, please let me know what is the state of this edge right now? Is it parallel to HP or not? Yes, sir. It is parallel to HP. You can see this. It is parallel to HP, but it is perpendicular to VP. Okay. If I can just extend this in the backward direction, it is going to cut this vertical plane and make an angle of 90 degrees. Let me show this to you. This edge. Uh, 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 uh. Let me keep it like this. Will it stay like this? Yes. This edge right now is parallel to the horizontal plane, parallel to the ground. Basically, if you extend it in the backward direction, you'll realize and it in the backward direction you'll realize it will cut the vertical plane somewhere here and make an angle of 90 degrees so you need to make sure that it stays parallel to vp so this parallel parallelism can be ensured in two ways either you can turn it like this or you can turn it in this fashion that means these two conditions can be stated as apex nearer the vp apex away from the vp okay so these are the two conditions basically so take a look now <laughs> we are not exactly in the front view i have shifted it so step number one we are going to simply keep it like this we are going to create start by creating the top view first okay and then the front view in this fashion i hope you are getting this right in step number two we'll do it like this we are going to recreate the front view from step one into step two using this height of 45 millimeters, this edge over here, which remains parallel to HP. In step number three, it has been clearly said in the question that apex is nearer to the VP. So if apex is nearer to the VP, then the condition is like, like this. Apex is nearer to the VP. And if I change the question, if I write, draw the projection when the apex is away from the VP, then this would have been the final case. Step number three. Okay. So our condition is apex is nearer to the VP. So you have to do it like this. And then you can create the front view and you can also create the top view. Okay. Proper diagrams uh, will be there. Don't worry. I'll help you how to make these diagrams in a very civilized manner. Don't worry one bit. Right. Let's go in with the solution and uh, <clears throat> I think we shall start. Here we go. Mm. No, 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 no. Let's switch to the solution. Here it is. So, first thing is you need to make a pentagon like this. Yes, sir. Done. Uh, where is the center? Sir, center can be found out very easily using intersection of lines. So, this is A and that's the opposite edge. The opposite edge must be having some center. Connect. This is E and that's the opposite edge. This is BC center. Join. And these two lines, wherever they intersect, that is the center point. And this center point essentially has to be connected with all of these corners so that they represent the slant edges in the top view. Done. Okay. So dimensioning properly do it. Now let's take a look at it from the front and uh, make the projector lines. And basically what you see now are these 
A, B and C. It's like a straight line. Right? So A and its front view. B and E. B is at the front. E is at the back. Similarly, C is at the front. D is at the back. C dash and D dash. Done, sir. No problem. The height of the pyramid happens to be in 70 millimeters. Okay? So this is the axis from here. 70 millimeters. And then you can connect these three edges that is co bo and ao here we go done in step number two we are going to recreate this entire step number one but there is a certain condition that certain condition is that this opposite edge okay so this is the corner and this is the opposite edge cd this cd will now be at a certain height that is 45 millimeters right so let me first of all lock this a dash over here and then at a certain height, let me make what certain height? 45 mm, uh, 45 millimeter height. Let me make a construction. Now with A dash and A dash and this much as the radius in your compass and with A dash as the center, you need to cut an arc and that is going to give you C dash, D dash. Join the line. Do it quickly. Now, this much as the radius, again A dash as center, cut an arc again. That is the location of the base of the axis. And then with this much as the radius and with a dash as the center cut an arc again and that's b dash e dash for you now what's up now axis is at an angle of 90 degree with respect to the base with respect to the base so you need to make an axis like this over here okay you can do this very easily using your mini drafter keep it over here in this position and then lock the screw as always and then draw a line like this can you do this yes sir we can it's very easy and then you need to again make these lines so so damn easy now what sir let's take a look at it from the top for the projector lines and from over here also take a look at the intersection points a a that's the location for a okay then e e that's the location for e this way you can make this uh, entire top view if you watch carefully it appears like a line although we know very well that since there are three corners involved it will make a triangle so this line is or this triangle is clearly visible from the top that's why you see this triangle okay o c d o c dash d dash and these two triangles are also visible what is not visible has to is a hidden feature which can be represented using dashed lines like this a and e a and b and then a and o let me zoom in okay this also is a dashed line right don't worry i'm going to make the construction stuff very lighter in the final slide uh, make sure that you are drawing all of these projector lines very very light 3h or 4h pencil preferably okay sir now that is done how do we proceed now so where are we let me switch on the camera again mm. Okay. Switched on. Camera mode. Looking nice. <laughs> okay. Where is the object? Here it is. So, uh, what have we done so far? Sir, what we've done is, uh, basically, we have, we started with this as the step number one. This was our step number two. Okay. In step number two, we gave this edge. 45 mm height above HP. In step number 3, uh, we will rotate it until we will rotate it until this edge becomes parallel to the vertical plane. Now you can see this edge will become parallel to this vertical plane. Vertical plane is behind, right? Okay. So this is what needs to be done. This is going to be our step number 3. Right? Let me take you back to the slide mode. Here it is. Now in step number 3, we are going to recreate this over here but rotating it at an angle of 90 degree in the clockwise sense this was step number two agreed agreed or not let me show this once again sir yes sir this was step number two uh, this was step number two now you need to recreate this you need to recreate this apex is nearer the vp okay just a sec mm -hmm. This is the vertical plane. Let me let me make this setup again. As I said, it it is a Jugadu setup. 
Step number one, step number two. Now the apex is nearer the VP. Okay, I hope you get this. And this is going to be your final front view. And that is going to be your final top view. Okay, so in step number two, step number one, step number two, this was the top view of step number two. Isn't it? The three triangles are visible. You can see this in the slide also. The three triangles are visible. The three triangles are visible. Triangular faces are visible to be very precise. Now we are going to rotate this. Rotate this and now you can see this edge over here. This should have had three hands. This edge over here becomes now parallel to the vertical plane. The vertical plane is here. This is the vertical plane. Right? My writing pad is the vertical plane. So in this condition you need to make the final front and the final top view. Okay, now step two, rotate it by 90 degree in the clockwise sense for step three. Uh, in step three, making the edge, this edge parallel to the vertical plane. Let's do it. Here we go. <clears throat> what is the first thing that you will do? You have to recreate. Okay, so there are certain measurements that you need to do. Starting with, can you make this rectangle again in this step, step 3, but rotate it by an angle of 90 degree in the clockwise sense. Do it. I don't give a damn how much these distances are. Just make this rectangle. This rectangle create it at an angle of or create it by rotating it 90 degree in the clockwise sense. Done. Then you need to find this point O dash. So it is right at the center over here. That is going to be O dash located. I'll explain how the all the points have been obtained. Don't worry. Let's say we are talking about this point. So if it has been rotated, this point let's say is one. So over here we are going to have this one as that point. Okay. So from one to E, you can take this cent radius and using one as center, you can cut an arc. This is going to become E. In the same fashion, all the remaining points can be obtained. I'm sure you now have a fair idea as to how these points can be obtained. You have to copy the same figure over here and now bring all the points upwards and from here to the right hand side. You just need to find the intersection points. This is for O, this is for O dash and that's O dash. In the same fashion, C and D are going to be along this line. Where is C? Here it is. Where is D? Here it is. Okay. As I told you, this is rather easy. What you finally are going to see is something of this sort. Let me show you the original, the realistic diagram. Okay. Just a sec. Step one, step two, step three. This is what you are going to see finally in the front view. And that is what we have drawn. Can you see this pentagon shape? Yes, sir. We can see the pentagon shape. Okay. Yeah. Here. here it is. One sec. You can see the pentagon shape. Can you see this triangular face also? Some portion, apparent portion of the triangular face. Not some, but uh, yeah, apparent portion. This is that triangular face. Whatever you can see directly, you've made it. Now, the features which are hidden can be drawn using dashed line. So these are those dashed lines. Done. The problem is finished now. It's finished. Anyway, uh, so that was the solution. And uh, as far as the construction work is concerned, please make sure that the projector lines stay very, very light. Use a 3H or a 4H pencil. Right? This is how the final solution looks. Thank you.